Hi, in the last tutorial about Spice Master Pro, I showed you the basics, how to use the masks and put effects on them. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the picture and picture effects to move the background image or incoming image in a transition to get the action within the mask. I'll also show how to use an external mat or mask with the picture and picture effects. In a future tutorial, we'll look at using Spice Master with titles. Let's get started. I'm using Magic's Video Pro X6 here, but the same method applies to Movie Edit Pro 2015. I'm going to show three examples. The first example is a simple transition. I've placed two clips on track one and overlapped them to make a transition of about four seconds. You see me walking through the woods in winter and summer and the trick will be to line up the incoming clip so that the two images line up and then the second clip will go back to full size and centered by the end of the transition. Open the Transitions or Fades tab and select Additional Fades and drag the Spice Master effect onto the transition. Click on the AB icon, select Settings and the Spice Master user interface will open with the default transition and parameters. To better see the mask, reduce the softness and texture parameters to zero. Click on Choose a Spice File, Spices, go down to Split, and double click on Crack 1V. I've chosen this one for now to better illustrate the impact of playing with the picture and picture parameters. Place the playback marker at the beginning of the graph and scroll a bit to see the start of the mask opening. In this case, it's pretty well centered over the winter walker, otherwise I would move the mask position by dragging on it. Moving along the timeline, the mask opens up to show the second clip. What I want to see here is the walker in summer lined up with the walker in winter. There are a couple of ways to do this. First, let's look at the parameters under the PIP Plus tab. Open the pop-down beside Choose and we see PIP, PIP Move Within, and Move Mat. The other choices are for titles. Select PIP. This turns on some rectangles or safe areas in the preview screen and there's a plus target right in the middle of the screen. The border for the second clip is now yellow. Just to the right of this Choose PIP is a button for zooming out the preview screen. Click on this to go through the cycles. Now you can see beyond the main image in case you want to drag or keyframe to outside of the main image. Dragging the target around moves the second clip and the mask location at the same time. Under Matte, we see that the X and Y parameters have changed. Since I've dragged the image down somewhat, we can see in the preview screen that the top of the jagged mask ends with the top of the clip. I can also drag the yellow edge of the window and move it. This affects the scale of the image. Note that the scale parameter has changed and also we see that the mask ends at the top and bottom within the window. I'll recenter the image by setting X and Y parameters to 0 and scale to 100. Let's look at the combination of moving the mask and the PIP clip. I'll move the mask to the left to see the walker. Now I'll move the PIP clip by dragging the plus target back to the center. Move back on the timeline to see the walker in the first clip and line up the two walkers as best I can. I can use the opacity parameter under image to see through to the first clip. In lining up the clips, the second clip is moved down so the mask does not go completely to the top. This would be fine if the mask was a type that did not go from top to bottom, but here we have a problem. One solution is to zoom in on the second clip using the scale slider to get the yellow box to be at the top and adjust the location of the clip to get the incoming walker to the right location. Watch as I move along the timeline. The mask opens up, but the jagged edge hits the left border of my second image. As well, if I keep on going, the mask would be completely open and we would still see a part of clip 1 at the left. If we go back to the movie editor screen, we would have a jump at the end of the transition. Thus, we need to keyframe the picture-in-picture -picture clip to get it back to full size and centered by the end of the transition. 
we need to keyframe scale and X and Y for the mat and X for the mask to keep it or move it towards the center. I won't show this here, but we'll take a look at keyframing a bit later. Before leaving this method, I want to show just another little trick. The mask can be rotated, and this can prove to be an interesting effect depending on the type of mask. If I reduce the picture-in-picture -picture image and rotate the mask by about 45 degrees, the mask stops at the borders of the picture-in-picture -picture image. Just an interesting possibility. A second method is to use the second choice, PIP Move Within. Again, we see the plus target, and the border of the second clip is now blue. Moving the plus target now moves the second clip behind the mask without moving the mask. Dragging to the right brings the walker into the middle of the mask opening, and I can line it up with the winter walker, again using the opacity slider to help. If I drag the image downwards, I now see black within the mask. This is different from the PIP method, where we saw the first image in this area. As before, I can drag the edge of the second clip with a blue border to resize it. But this time, the slider that is affected is under image, whereas before it was under matte. Scrolling along the timeline, we see the mask opening up on the second clip. As before, when the mask gets to the blue border, we have a problem. We see black. As well, there'd be a jump at the end of the transition from the size and location within the clip. So we're going to have to keyframe back to the 100% scale and have X and Y at zero before getting to the end of the transition. However, since the mask wasn't moved, we don't need to keyframe it as well. I'll start my keyframing at about 50%. Click on the keyframe button beside image scale parameter and place a keyframe at the 50% location. Note that we're now in the keyframing window for image scale. Move to 100%, add a keyframe, and change the parameter to 100. Click on the keyframe button beside image X to open the keyframe graph. Note that both X and Y are lit at the same time. Place the playback marker at 50% and add a keyframe. Add another one at 100%. To get back to the correct location, change the parameters to 0 for both X and Y. Now check back that everything works as planned. I didn't touch on any other effects like we saw in the previous tutorial. Now that I have the transition set up, I can add in some effects to the mask. I'll start with Bevel Ripple and select a preset like Pillow 6 and now I'll give it a bit of glow effect by selecting Glow Orange 1 Medium. There, let's see how that looks. Of course, you can play around all day with the masks and effects, including keyframing. If you find some combinations that you really like, save the settings for future use. And I'm going to do just that. I'll call it Summer Walker. Let's look at two more examples. The meaning of picture-in-picture -picture in Movie Edit Pro is having one image superimposed over another. Let's do something like the transition, but this time we'll have the summer walker enter the scene and then it'll go back to winter. I've placed my base video of winter on track 3. This is a trick because I'm going to have two overlays on the screen at the same time, like this image on the screen, and I'll need tracks available above and below the base video. I'm going to start with a second image, which will go on tracks 1 and 2. I have the same summer video clip on track 1. Now I can drag a Spice Master effect onto track 2 and slide it to the beginning of the clip and extend it to cover the length. Make sure that the chroma key arrow is pointing upwards. Double click to open the Spice Master interface. Bring in the previously saved effects, Summer Walker. In the previous case, the effect starts at zero and goes to 100%, but in this case I want the walker to appear but not take up the entire screen and then go back out. Click on the button for completion presets and select an appropriate one. This one opens the mask to 50%, holds it, and then closes it. Next we may need to move the summer walker in the overlay clip, so go to picture in picture and select PIP move within. Drag the plus target to get the walker to the right location at the start, making sure to fill the screen from top to bottom. Now scroll along the timeline to make sure that it works. 
adjust the completion curve if aims to the image and mask. In this case, since the summer walker goes to the right, I'll add keyframes to the mask. Click on the X keyframe button for the mask. Set a keyframe where the mask movement starts. I'm happy with the mask starting in the center, so I'll leave it there, but as the walker comes in, I want to move the mask to the right. I'll set another keyframe at about 95% and drag the mask over to the right to line it up better with the walker, being careful not to get the right side of the mask off the screen. Let's check the results. Mm, not too bad. On to the third example. For this one I'll use a map that comes from Magix. I want to have an inset picture in picture effect, as you see here, that comes in and goes out. I've already set up my video clip on track 4. Drag the Spice Master effect onto track 5, resize and position it. Invert the arrow and double click to open the Spice Master interface. Set the softness and texture parameters to 0. Choose Spice File and go to the top of the library. I've added a link to a copy of the Movie Edit Pro masks. For this example, I'm going to choose one that's a bit difficult. I have to invert this mask by clicking on the button. I'll set completion to 50%, a straight line. Normally I would use completion to open and close the mask, but it doesn't work with this mat. Under PIP, choose Move Mat. In this case, the mat is defined by a pink border. As before, we can drag the mat around and resize it. And as we saw with picture in picture, moving the mat moves the mask because it is the mask. As we move the mask tool around, we can see that it's constrained by the pink box. I'll start by getting the inset image or mat to the size and location where I want it to be while it remains on the screen. I don't want it as wide as shown, so I'll move it over to the right side until I'm happy with the width. Slightly over half the width should do. Now I'll drag the mat towards the left so that the bottom corner of the rectangle is about where my hand is in the winter image. That's my main position. Click on the keyframe icon beside scale for the mat. I'll set a keyframe at about 25% where I want the image to be fixed and set another keyframe at zero. At zero, I'll change the mat scale to zero. Now the rectangle will start at size zero and grow over time. I'll set another keyframe at 60% where I want the mask to start getting smaller and another at 100% and change the value here to zero. Now I need to place the starting point of the mask at the hand and have the mask grow towards the right. So click on the keyframe icon beside X for the mat, set a keyframe at about 25% and set another keyframe at zero. At this point, move the target to the upraised hand. Now the mask starts to grow at the hand and opens towards the right. Place keyframes at 60% and 100%. I want the mask to move off the screen, so I'll zoom out of the preview window and drag the plus target towards the upper right just outside of the main window. Now I'll zoom back to normal and preview. And there it is, the inset picture gets smaller as it goes off towards the upper right. Now I want to position the picture within the mask, move play back to the middle and change from mat to PIP move within. Drag the plus target to position the image within the rectangle, just like in the first example. And I'll leave it right about there. Now there's a trick here. If I switch back to mat, the image in my little window goes back to the center. So I have to exit with PIP move within active in order to fix the position of my inset image within the mask. Let's check the result. There it is. Now let's go back and add some effects to the mask edge. Open up the depth tab and once again select pillow 6 under bevel. But this time change the style to in. Under glow select glow yellow to medium. Hmm, not quite what I want. I'll increase the opacity to 80 and give it a bit of a shadowy glow towards the bottom right with X and Y at 0 0.15. Done. 
Let's look at the results. The first beach image comes into view and starts to fly out as a summer image starts to appear in the crack. Then we go back to Canadian winter. We've seen how to move an image around in transitions and in a mat. Of course, there's much more that can be done and many different masks to try out. I hope that you've learned a few things here and will be inspired to try to create your own effects. Thank you for watching. Enjoy.